time, it's it's uh, the eights that I stick with, and, and that is literally just a preference thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. Looks like he's got a lot of red in him. Man, that thing's big. All right, lastly, let's go back out to the water and I'll show you exactly how I'm working those drop shots. Back. Good looking fish. And slide it out so there's a lot of hook sticking out and that will make it sit almost straight up like that. So yeah, I was talking to freaking uh, Powerball. Yeah, he got him. Yep. Shazam. Feel decent? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, big pop. Wait, watch this. Oh, I thought I could get him. Yeah. Finally. Finally. Feels like a decent one. Ah, it's just average. That black and green uh, ball head worm though, every time here. Skilled release. Perfect. No, uh, green worm. Just a little guy. Good fighter, though. There you go, nice little fish. Holy gunpowder. All right guys, I want to take a quick break from the video to show you what's going on and what I'm using out there. Uh, we'll start with the rods and reels. The first one is a uh, Katana K5. It's a seven foot six ultralight rod. This is the rod I use to drop shot with. It's got a very stiff backbone, but a very soft tip. So I like to call it a, a moderate fast action rod. Uh, the reel I have it paired with is a Daiwa Presso 1000. For line I have it spooled with four pound Sinister Strand Premium Fiber Braid. And then I run that up to about a five to six foot liter of Runkle Power Fluoro in five pound. And then I attach it with a, a, a double uni nut. The next rod is the bait and weight rod I, I'm using out there. And this is a uh, eight foot ultralight rod. It's a Daiwa Spinmatic. And uh, this, this rod isn't a custom rod, it's, it's a lot less expensive than the uh, Katana, but you can use this for drop shot or any other rod like this, just any ultralight rod in this, at least 7 foot 6 or 8 foot, uh, and you can give drop shot a try. For a reel, I have a Daiwa Legalis 1000, and then I have it spooled with straight Runkle Power Fluoro in 5 pounds. 
So no uh, no braid or anything like that. I don't use that on my uh, my bait and weight setups. Uh, some guys do. I just prefer to run the, the, the straight power fluoro. Now let's go to the bench and I'll show you the rigs, uh, how I set them up and the baits I'm using that are at least working out there. All right, guys, I'll show you all the rigs I'm using and the baits uh, that, are, that are bringing me a little success today. Um, we'll start with the, the first rig, the, the drop shot rig. Uh, on today's day, I'm, I'm using a single drop shot. Uh, the double drop shot just has a second hook up, you know, like uh, eight to 10 inches from the, uh, the bottom hook. Um, and the bottom hook, I usually tie between six and eight inches from our uh, drop shot weight. Um, I normally use a uh, Runkle five pound power fluoro from Malign. I just have this green uh, braid on here, so it's a little bit easier to see, but I don't use a uh, straight braid to uh, drop shot with because this, this, obviously this green line is, is just too bright and the fish are gonna see it. Um, for a hook, uh, I typically use a owner mosquito hook in size eight. That's what I have the most success with. Um, but you can also use the size 10s. A lot of guys like to use the size 10s with a size smaller. Sometimes when the, I wanna size down my baits, I pre-time my rigs and I have a few uh, with uh, number 10 hooks on there and I'll use the 10s. But most of the time it's, it's uh, the eights that I stick with and, and that is literally just a preference thing. Uh, for a weight, uh, on this rig I got an eighth ounce weight. That's just cause it's a pre-tied rig. Uh, but typically I use uh, 1 16th or 3 30 seconds or even a 1 30 second when I drop shot. Uh, the heavier weights are more used for uh, uh, when it's windy uh, or if I need to get the, the, the fish are holding out a little bit further and I need to get a further cast. Typically that's not the case. Uh, typically you can get away with the 1 30 second or the 3 30 second or even the 1 16th and uh, uh, you can feel a lot more of the action of your, of your bait as opposed to feeling the uh, the weight drag on the bottom. So it's, it's, it's a lot better, in my opinion, to use lighter weight, but sometimes the weather conditions are gonna dictate that. The uh, baits that are working the best on this day are uh, these GSF Powerball worms. And both of these uh, tend to work really well at Santa Ana River Lakes. Uh, this one, the green and orange one is, is green pumpkin. And this one's a yellow and black one, or it's kind of a green and black actually. Uh, but both these, these inch or, or not inch worms, Powerball worms, uh, work very well in the water conditions there at Santa Ana River Lakes. I also use, if you see in the other videos, a variety of the, the Spartan minnows and the mini Spartans. Uh, but on this day, I was just using the Powerball worms and they seemed to, to like it. And that's why I always say, you know, there's no one color or one bait you should have. Um, you need to have a variety because you never know on any given day what they're going to want to bite. Now I'll show you how I hook these on to the drop shot hook. And with these Powerball worms, I started the very middle of the head and just push that, that point right down in there very carefully so I don't hook myself until it goes about halfway around the curve of the hook there. And then I just simply push the point out and slide it all the way up to the eye of the hook so it's as straight as possible and then you get a ton of action off that when you work it back. All right, now let's go to the uh, the bait and weight rig. And what I'm using out there is a standard Carolina rig with a, a quarter ounce egg sinker, Carolina keeper. And on today's date, I have about a 12 to a 14 inch leader down to a number 10 mosquito hook. Um, you're gonna see in a minute the underwater footage. I probably should have shortened up my leader and probably would have caught more fish. But um, from the shore, the water looked very, very clear. It turns out it's a little bit different, and you'll see that in a second once you get the underwater camera out there. But for bait, what was working is uh, this GSF mice tail called Slimer. It's kind of a green and, and uh, almost clear or white, um, and they seem to really enjoy that one. And I'll show you how to hook these on. And there's multiple ways to do it, but the, the best way I've found that gets me the most hookups um, is to go right through the, the top of the head. So I'll push it on, just to where it's getting to the bend. And then I just push the hook through and slide it out so there's a lot of hook sticking out and that will make it sit almost straight up like that. So when the fish takes it, they get a lot of the hook. At least in my experience, that's what I found has worked the best with these mice tails. Um, sometimes I would go down through the middle like this and push it through. So the shank of the hook is buried in the worm so it looks kind of like that, 
I'll do that. Or another way to do it is called a wacky rig and you just put the hook right through the middle of the worm. And this also gives it a lot of action like that. But uh, I have found I get the most solid hookups when I go right through the head. Like I showed you, like right like that. Because um, you'll get bit either way, but I seem to get more fish when I hook it that way. So just, uh, you know, it's up, up to you guys, personal preference. L let me know in the comments if you find another way that works better with these mice tails. Um, that's the best way I've found, but uh, it's certainly not the only way. There's always a bunch of ways to do it. So uh, let me know if you have a different uh, uh, method of hooking these on. All right, next let's uh, take a look at some uh, underwater footage I got out there and it was really, really surprising. So check this out. All right, uh, throwing the camera on out. Hit the bottom there. Let's let the uh, dust settle a little bit and uh, see what we can see. All right, first thing is it is really mucked up. Um, what's going on is there's a lot of current in the water from the intake in the big lake and that flows over to the uh, small pond and that's what all this movement of this uh, this silt is and there you can see a tilapia off in the background there you got something else coming by uh, looks uh, it's a big carp the carp are probably spawning this time of year so we're probably gonna see a few carp on here Here's another tilapia coming right up to the camera. What do we got here? Oh, another tilapia. Yeah, that first one that came right at the camera was really big. This one's a uh, good size too. Oh, here's a trout. Not right on the on the bottom though. He's a couple feet off the bottom. Oh, here's a huge school of gizzard shad right here. Those things are everywhere in the lakes. Uh, no way to keep them out with the uh, St. Anne River bled uh, flowing in there. They're just in there. Nothing, nothing anybody can do about it. But as you can see how uh, mucked up the water is, if you look on this uh, footage of uh, the outside looking in, it looks totally clear. Oh, here's a huge carp. Might have been interested in the camera. And if I would have known how bad the uh, water was, I definitely would have uh, used a shorter leader, but I uh, was still able to hook up trout. Oh man, massive school of uh, gizzard shad. Oh, here, another tilapia. Another good size one. Uh, here's another one. It looks like he's got a lot of red in him. Man, that thing's big. So the tilapia seem to be doing all right, even though it's uh, super cold. All right, lastly, let's go back out to the water and I'll show you exactly how I'm working those drop shots back. All right, guys, show me uh, casting out there. I'll reel in my slack and uh, let it sink to the bottom. I'm going to start my retrieve and I just do some light pops upward and then do one full reel crank and, and put the rod tip down. So that allows that bait to pop up slowly and then it drops down near the bottom and that's typically when the fish are hitting it you just see right there i drop my rod tip and and bang he hits and the fish is on so uh when you're fishing the drop shot there's no real wrong way to do it just give it a little bit of movement in the bait keep it real slow uh but every once in a while you want to let that line go slack and let that bait dip because as you saw that's that's how they wanted it and that's when he hit Gonna make doubles? Yeah, it's this black and green Powerball worm. Got the last one on it too. Come on, Carrie. Yep. Ah! Yep. Every 
every time. 60% of the time, it works every time. That's a chunkier one. Yeah. Looking fish. Chunky bro. Oh, it's twice the size of mine. Really? <laughs> yeah, dude. The one I caught was pretty small. It's pretty illegal. Yeah. You got him on the mice tail? Oh, okay. Right here. Yeah, that's where mine was up close, too. I think you can see it's a significant drop off right here. You can see it right there. They're supposed to be big there. Yeah. Well, I think they will be in the afternoon. That's how you use it. Not supposed to, you're supposed to cooperate, fish. Boom. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Noise. All right, ladies and gents, there you have it. Good times over at Santa Ana River Lakes, as always. Uh, I've been going there since I was a kid, so it kind of feels like home to me, so I always enjoy fishing there, and, and uh, uh, most of the time I would get on some, some decent fish, and uh, today was no exception. Uh, we had to work for it a little. Um, the fish were being finicky. Uh, as you can see in that underwater footage, the water was, was really mucked up, even though uh, uh, from the shoreline it didn't look mucked up, but it was. Uh, so I think that was affecting the bite, but uh, uh, we eventually got some presentations to them uh, that they liked, and we got some fish to the net. So, so that, was, that was all good. Um, uh, but like I always say, um, I had to use a bunch of different techniques to, to get the fish that I got. It wasn't one single thing that was working. So don't be afraid to try new things and learn different techniques. Um, it really is the difference between catching and not catching sometimes. Uh, you're going to have those days where, where the fish are just biting and you can do no wrong, but those are rare. Most of the time, uh, the fish are going to want it a certain way or a certain bait. Uh, so that's why it's always good to have a lot of tools in the toolbox, like I always say, and, and uh, you, you can refer to that, try different things, and sometimes you'll figure out exactly what they want, and uh, it can really be the difference between catching and not catching. So with that, if you want any of the fine products I use on the channel, like the Golden State Fishing Custom Baits, the Waterland Sunglasses, or the Katana Rods, uh, there's a QR code right up here. If you click on that, you go to a link tree which will have hyperlinks to all these sites. Uh, if you buy anything on Golden State Fishing and you input code CSPANKER at checkout, you get 10% off. If you use the hyperlink for Waterland Sunglasses, it's located in this QR code in the link tree, uh, and you make a purchase, you automatically get 15% off. And the uh, Katana Rods are here now. Uh, they are available, they came in. Uh, I haven't got one yet myself, uh, but it's it's on my list. I just got to get up to uh, Esteban's place and, and get with him so I can get him a rod. Um, but they, they are here and they are awesome. And they even have uh, cases, like carrying cases with them. And, and uh, they're, they're really, really nice. Uh, I got to handle them uh, before uh, they came in, some of the, uh, the early models. And, and they are really, really nice rods. And I just, I just haven't seen the carry cases other than pictures. So... As soon as I get it, I'll put it on here and uh, go over it with y'all. But uh, if you want one, go on Instagram at either Katana Rods 2022 or at GSF Custom Baits and send them a message and they will tell you exactly what you need to do to get set up with one. So as always, uh, remember to uh, like and subscribe and, and share the videos. If you ever have questions or comments, please uh, leave it here on the channel and I do my very best to get back to you in a timely manner. And uh, with that, uh, hope to see y'all out there and uh, tie lines. Oh,